Hi and welcome to this video tutorial on creating a brick material in V-Ray for Rhino. I'm going to be using this simple courtyard model here and I've set up a camera that currently renders out like this view here and we'll be replacing these white walls with our brick texture. Now to start with I'm going to download a texture image for some brick and I'm going to go to textures.com to do that and I'll put a link in the description of where I've got this texture from. I'm going to be using this first one here and a good thing to note when you're downloading Brick's textures is to make sure they're seamless images because if they're not then you won't get them to line up when they tile across your surface. So make sure when you download them you get a seamless image. And we're just going to work with one colour image of our Brick. So I'm going to download that like so and we're then going to import that into our Rhino file. So to bring that in I'm going to go back to my Rhino file I'm going to open up the V-Ray Asset Editor, which is found with this little V icon, or in your V-Ray panels up here. We're going to go to the Materials tab. We're going to create a new material by clicking Add Material here. Make a generic material. And we're going to rename this Brick, like so. Now once you've created your brick material, we're then going to start to add in our texture map into that material. Now if you don't see this little panel on the right hand side, you'll need to click this small arrow icon on the right of the tab there. And what we're going to do is under the diffuse, we're going to input our image we downloaded for our brick texture. So to do that, we click this checkerboard box here. We select bitmap because we're going to be uploading an image or a bitmap file to this material. So select bitmap and then we're going to locate that particular image in our folders. So here's that brick and the textures there. We'll hit open and you'll see V-Ray will give you a small preview of what that looks like when it's loaded in. So that's fine. Once we've done that we hit the back button and you can see there that our material has now updated. Now to apply that to our red texture, I'm just going to select the model there, right click on the brick and click on add to selection, like so. And now we can do a short render test to see how that's currently looking. So I'm going to open up my render frame and we're just going to do a V-Ray interactive render to have a look and see how that's currently rendering. So here you can see the brick material is on, but at the moment it's way too big. So we're going to have to adjust the mapping and the scale of this in order for the bricks to be correctly sized to our object. Now bricks have a standard size and you can find a brick dimension chart online to help you get an idea of how big bricks are in reality. So it's important that we're sizing our texture to match the real world scale. This diagram here shows a simple size of a brick and I'm going to be looking at the height size now because I want to match that with my image which is square at the moment. So a height of one brick plus the mortar is 75 millimeters and what I've done is I've already counted how many bricks high this image is and this is 34 bricks high which tells me I need to do 34 times 75 millimeters which is 2550 millimeters and that's the height my texture should be in my render. Now it's important to do this calculation when you're using bricks otherwise your bricks will be out of scale and they'll look slightly off and it's important that bricks are true to real world scale when you're doing them as a texture. So in order to rescale the size of this we're then going to go back to our Rhino file, select our object and go to properties, texture mapping which is this small cone here with the checkerboard on it. We're going to apply a box mapping and we're just going to start by drawing out a random box. It doesn't matter how big this is to start with because we're then going to resize it like so. And once you've got the preview of the box there, just hit enter. Once you've done that, box mapping will then be applied to the image and you can then specify the exact size of that of the box you want. So the XYZ size will dictate the size of your texture. Now I want mine to be 2.5 meters or 2550 millimeters. So because I've got a square image, I'm just going to type that figure in each of these X, Y and Z boxes and that will dictate the size of my texture on my object. So now you see I've inputted that number in the X, Y, Z size and then going to re-render out this view and we'll have a look and see how that's come out. 
So there we go, the bricks are now down to a much more uniform scale, the exact scale that they would be in reality. And you can see them because it's a seamless image as well, they're nicely tiled together. Now something you might find, and especially with bricks, is that you want the bottom row to start directly on that line and at the moment my texture is slightly off. So in order to do that, to reset and justify your texture to a specific datum point, what we can do is we can go back to our texture mapping, we can select under the XYZ position, if you click on this little icon here, it allows us to pick a point at the bottom of our material, like so, and that will justify that position to that specific point, so the material will start from there. And if I then re-update my render, I'll have a look at it, you'll then see that the brick should start, there you go, on that bottom row, like so. So now our brick's correctly justified to that bottom point, and that's a really useful tool if you need to sort of accurately justify levels of bricks to certain datum points in your scene. Now, that's good for a flat texture, but Brick does have some surface profile relief to it as well. And to do that, we're going to be using the bump map in the materials. So to set a bump map, we can go to Maps, Bump and Normal Mapping, turn it on with this kind of enabler here, and we can import an image into it in this location. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop in this image into the bump map as well. Essentially how bump works is that when you've got a kind of light part of an image, it will push it back and if it's dark, it will push it forward. So it will create a relief to do with the tones in your image. So if your mortar is a different color to your brick, it will naturally create that relief for you there. Now you might have to invert it, but we'll have a look and see how it's coming out. So I'll drop it in like so. So that's it in the bump map position and we can always up the amount to make it a bit stronger as well and we'll do a quick test render to see how that's looking in that view. Now it's quite subtle when you use the bump and it just creates a small sort of relief to the brick texture there which you can kind of slightly see that's happening to the image. Now what's happening is because my mortar is lighter, it's actually pushing the mortar forward. I want it to be the opposite. I want the mortar to go back in the image. So to do that, we can just go back to our bump map here and under the parameters and under color manipulation, we can invert the texture. So essentially you flip it round. So whatever was white is now black and vice versa. And what that would do is you can see here it's very subtle, but it's just pushed that mortar back a bit into the brick to give it some relief. There. And if I up this, let's up it to a 15 to make it quite intense, you'll be able to see it more clearly there. So here you can see that now we're really getting that relief on the brick material there. Now you could use a displacement map for this, which is a more extreme version of this bump, which actually physically manipulates the geometry to change it. And if you were doing close-ups of brick, I would use a displacement instead of the bump. But because we're quite far away, the bump map works well just to give us that relief, but doesn't add too much time to the render. So it keeps it quite quick rendering out. So you can change that amount to give it more or less relief, however you see fit. So that was just a quick tutorial on how to create a brick material in V-Ray for Rhino from a JPEG image. Hope you found this useful and if you want any other tutorials on creating textures in V-Ray or setting up renders in V-Ray, please check out the videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.